We hear God's word from the 17th chapter of Luke. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to my mom, from the time I could talk till, I don't know, when I went to seminary probably, I always wanted to be about three to five years older than what I was, right? So you can imagine, right, in kindergarten, you want to be one of the big kids. You, when you're in middle school, you desperately want out of that and into high school and so on and so forth. I wanted the freedom I perceived uh, that came with being um, older. I wanted the confidence I thought being older and wiser would give me. I always just thought the next phase of life would be like better because I would have more of whatever. And for the longest time, I thought that's how like everyone operated. Like who wants to be in middle school? No one. Um, but like doesn't everyone just want to like settle down, just get to the, the place? And apparently not, shocking. There are people out there who live their lives content with where they're at and with what they have. Uh, they, there are those who simply take what life throws at them as it comes to them. They don't spend years worrying and planning for impossible hypotheticals. I don't know what that is like. If that is you, please, let's talk and like give me. It was a truly a revelation when I found out that people live their lives that way. And I, I am married to someone who does that well, so that's like helped me a little bit, but also he'll be the first to tell you it's an uphill battle with me because he'll be like, it'll be fine. And I'm like, no, it won't. <laughs> uh, but I think we all experience this desire for something more. You know, maybe it manifests in wishing we were older, but it could also manifest in wishing we were richer or prettier or more zen or more appreciated or whatever it might be. And after two and a half years of less, how many of you have felt the less of the two and a half years? Yeah. I think we understand this instinct on a whole other level. We are not only wanting more, we are desperate for more. But we're also scared of it because it's so different from what we've experienced. And we can't quite put our finger exactly on what the more is. So when the disciples, in response to Jesus saying they have to follow him and do hard things like, I don't know, forgive people, that comes right before this reading, they say, oh, wow, I need more faith in order to do that, Jesus. I get where that comes from. Oh, I am not equipped for this. I need more. It's all too easy and all too human to play the quantity game, even with something as ephemeral as faith. We are so used to systems where more is better that we simply assume that's the way it works for everything. And yet, Jesus doesn't play that game. Jesus refuses to let us equate faith and trust with money and power by assuming that more is better. He instead turns the plea for more upside down and says, well, all it takes is like faith the size of a mustard seed. While the disciples think they need more, Jesus reassures them that they... Number one, already have enough. And number two, it's maybe a little ridiculous to quantify things like faith. I think instead of how maybe you've heard this phrase preached before, how many of you have heard a sermon like, wow, since the disciples don't make mulberry trees walk, they must not have even a mustard seed of faith. Anyone sit through one of those sermons? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's what's happening. I think Jesus is actually 
questioning the whole system that the disciples are trying to play into. Lindsay Bakers, uh, if you want to go upstairs, you can. They're already up there. You're... In her book, The Soul of Money, Lynn Twist says there are three basic myths that we tell ourselves that keep us locked into a mindset of scarcity. Somewhat side note, if you are um, looking for a resource to just like blow open your understanding of what stewardship is, especially around money, go get Lynn Twist, The Soul of Money. Like it is the single greatest, most impactful book about money that I have read. So go get it. But she says that the myths we tell ourselves that make us think everything is scarce are one, there's not enough to go around. Literally, things are scarce. Two, more is better. And three, that's just the way it is. And she is obviously from the title talking specifically about money, but these myths apply in so many ways to so many other things that we as humans just want to quantify and then commodify. When we live in this scarcity mindset, we are in constant anxiety and fear that we don't or won't have enough of whatever it is. Money, faith, whatever. And we exhaust ourselves trying to get more and therefore we isolate ourselves from others because, hey, if I need more, and that means you can't have any, you've got to go over there, right? And so we see how this plays out in so many ways from our politics, right? <laughs> People, are, no, no offense, present company excluded, most politicians are very into a zero-sum game, right? Like, oh, I can't have any, and so or I need it all, so you can't have any, right? We see that in our politics, in our economy, yes, even to how we do church. Oh my gosh, how many of you have been in churches where you're like, oh my gosh, you can't go to that other place because you have to be here. You have to give all of yourself here. You can't go. It's exhausting, and it's not sustainable. The antidote to this scarcity mindset, to this desire for moreness, according to Lynn Twist, is to shift our framework from scarcity to one of sufficiency or even abundance. When we let go of all the fear and anxiety that is wrapped up in that scarcity mindset, we are free and better able to see the abundance that God has provided enough all around us. She says, knowing that there is enough inspires sharing, collaboration, and contribution. Doesn't that sound like a nice community to live in? So to counter the myths of scarcity, we hold on to three truths about abundance. One, money is like water. It flows where it is needed not to be confused with trickle-down economics. That's not a thing. But, <laughs> right, but that, but that gener money will, will go where it is needed. Two, the second truth that we hold on to is what you appreciate, appreciates. Where you invest your time and money and energy will beget time and money and energy. And three, Collaboration creates prosperity. We need to reach out to one another to break out of our isolation. In other words, when we release our fear and connect with our passions and with one another, we are better able to see the abundance that is all around us. When we have a mustard seed, it's not that that little magical quality like does something but that little thing gets planted and we can watch it grow and spread and give life and abundance as, in ways we could not have ever imagined. I'm not quite sure, I'll be honest, uh, what is going on with the second part of this reading where Jesus likens discipleship to being a worthless slave. 
like uh, talk about word choices I wish Jesus had made differently, right? Um, <laughs> there are probably, probably is a better metaphor for our 21st century understanding. But I think maybe there is something to living in abundance that prompts the gracious sort of response of, I'm just doing my job, right? When we're not worried about getting enough, when we're not worried about having enough or making enough, we just are in the world. And I think there is a way of being in the world that acknowledges how much goodness there is and how simply living in this good and abundant world is enough, no special compensation needed because we trust in what God has given. What would our lives and our faith look like if we trusted God's abundance and lived with gratitude and the belief that we not only have enough, but that we are enough? When we drop our yearning for more and release the fear and isolation, we can do really great things, better than randomly moving a mulberry tree into the sea. That's a weird We can do great things no matter what quantity we want to put on it. We need to take Jesus' words seriously, that he came not to chastise, not to take away, not to play into our systems of more and less, but rather to give us life and to have it abundantly. And we should walk through the world rejecting the myths around us that tell us otherwise, because they do not serve us well. And to help us remind us of how God can create and give abundance, even in times that seem too small or too hard, and in things that we think are too small, here again is our Mother Julian's reflections on the hazelnut. I invite you to imagine this vision with us. And in this, he showed me a little thing, the quantity of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand. Maybe put your palm out. See if you can feel the weight of that hazelnut. She continues, it was as round as any ball. I looked upon it with the eye of my understanding and thought, what may this be? And it was answered generally thus, it is all that is made. I marveled at how it might last, for I thought it might suddenly have fallen to nothing for littleness. And I was answered in my understanding, it lasts and ever shall, for God loves it. And so have all things their beginning by the love of God. In this little thing, I saw three properties. The first is that God made it, the second that God loves it, and the third that God keeps it. May you know that God has made you and that God loves you and that God keeps you. Whether you feel the size of a mustard seed or hazelnut or if you feel you can move mountains. In Jesus' name, amen.